Hello everyone, here's Andrea and in this video today we are going to learn how, a little bit on uh, signal processing. Uh, more specifically uh, we will focus on identifying and um, yeah, identifying basically analyzing the, the peaks that are contained within a signal or within a function um, which I think by the way it's a really useful um, thing to to understand and to to know how to to do that because uh, it may it may be very useful for uh, quite a lot of different applications. Um, indeed, um, when I'm thinking about peaks, uh, I mean uh, you you can find peak peaks everywhere. Um, if you take for example. Uh, in economics, the, the trend of different uh, economic indexes uh, generates some peaks, some maxima, some minima in their functions. Or uh, just taking the bare electric, uh, bare electric signal, uh, it will be affected by, by, by some noise, but also it will present some peaks. Also the noise itself has some peaks, which we can identify, reduce, or or analyze and then well data science of course the uh, finding the maxima and the minima which are peaks mm, of a function is very important because they, they can have a very important meaning for the overall understanding of what the function actually represents and well also for example if you think about the, the medical field uh, the heart rate signal uh, I mean uh, it's very important to to identify the peaks and to calculate their intensity the, the peaks of the heart rate that are characterizing our heart rate signals because uh, fr from those uh, the doctors can infer very precious information about our health and um, for, uh, about the the health of our heart so, yeah, these were some very few examples uh, about why uh, being able to identify the peaks, hence the, the maxima and the minima of a, of a function or of a signal is, is really, really important in data science and in a lot of different other applications. Um, to do that, we will exploit again the SciPy library so we can start here by importing the libraries that we will use in this script first of all we will use numpy so i'm importing it as np um, we will plot our data so i'll just import its usual matplotlib um dot by plot as plt and then as i told you the scipy library uh, more specifically um we will focus on the package signal which contains a uh, very useful a lot of useful functions for processing signals and uh, um sorry it's not import but it's from from this package we will import a specific function for identifying and analyzing the peaks uh, which is called find peaks there it is perfect so the first thing that we need to do as in a lot of other um, of other examples that we from, uh, yeah of other examples that we uh, have seen so far uh, we have to define the the function that we are going to analyze and this function has to do to, to feature um, some peaks so to define a function but by defining a function I mean to to define the X and the Y arrays that will build up the, the plot so Let's start from this. So, defining the 
x and y arrays. I'll start as usual with the x array, calling it x, and I'll use the numpy lin space function and I'll generate an array of, uh, let's say from 0 to 10 and 100 equally spaced values, uh, integer values more specifically, and then I'll just generate our Y array. This time I want to use, since I want some peaks, uh, I'll use the function random. In about the function random, I will use rand and rand n, which basically is a function that uh, give you samples from uh, a normal distribution, as you can see here. Rand return a sample from the standard normal distribution and we just have to uh, enter the size of the array that we want to generate this time since the y and the x rays have to, to match each other I will enter 100 but then I want to modify a little bit more this function so I will just multiply it 40 x array previously defined and I also want to square it. Perfect. In this way I know that the function will be uh, positive for all the different values. So we have done quite quite a lot for, for cause as you will see the, the, the function is not very difficult. Um, we're just arrived to, to the focal point which is the finding the peaks so find peaks um, what we have to do is now to, to call the function find peaks and to assign its output to uh, a variable the variable will be called peaks and I'll just call find peaks and now I want to, to pose a little bit into speak about this function. Uh, the, the mandatory input for, for this function is only one and it's the uh, array containing the, the values that we're going to, to analyze, which is the Y array in this case. Um, and then there are uh, a lot of other uh, optional inputs. And for example, I want to show you some of them here in the documentation for example height uh, with height you can specify the minimal height for the peaks to be identified the threshold is like the, the vertical distance uh, the minimal vertical distance between two neighboring peaks uh, in order to, to have them identified by the function, the distance, which is the horizontal distance between two neighboring peaks, and so on, the prominence, the width of the peaks, and so on, the plateau size. Um, th they are really a lot, because we can tune our research, our, our processing procedure, uh, in order to, according to, to, to the specific characteristics of our, of our signal. For this, uh, for our application, I will just enter the Y array and then I will just enter some random, but I will keep very low values in order, since I don't want to, 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 to exclude anything from, from our analysis, so I will just enter um, uh, yeah, I will just put them all equal to one. Um, let's say distance, and that's it. Um, <clears throat> another uh, useful thing thing to, to 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 understand is the output of this function. Um, if we were to um, give as input only the mandatory. Uh, y array without any other option um, the output of this function would be uh, well we, we can try we can have a try to it uh, the output of the function uh, we'll 
print it. It's just, as you can see here, um, an array which contain the, um, the indexes of the pigs that were found in the, in the Y array. Uh, but uh, if we were to enter also uh, other optional values, the output of the function would change and as you can see, there are a lot of other uh, elements. Um, we still have the indexes of our picks. Then um, there's like a dictionary. So this array become an array with other subarrays uh, within itself. And the second array, it's a dictionary that contains the values of the heights of the Picks that have been found, the thresholds, the left threshold and the right threshold, and I think that somewhere should be also the distance. So basically, uh, according to what we specify in here, uh, we will get different outputs from the function. So uh, this is very useful because we are interested in the position of the picks, but also in their heights. So if I now try, let's close this. If I'm now interesting, interested in finding the heights of the peak, I can like define an array called height. And as we saw this array, the, the values that, that the, the heights of the peaks are uh, contained within the subarray the second subarray of pigs, and more specifically, I have also to uh, refer uh, with the, with the key value pick heights to identify the values of the, of the heights of the pigs. So this, just to leave a reminder, is will be a list of the heights of the pigs. Perfect. Um, what we want to store now from this function is the position of the, of the peaks because we got the, the indexes of the different peaks but not the position. But it's very easy to obtain the position. I will call peak position the list that will contain the, the positions. And we can just use the indexes obtain this call uh, to index the um, our initial x-ray to obtain the position the actual position of the pigs so it's just x x zero because was the first subarray that contained the the pig in the indexes of the pigs so yeah and this is just a list of the pigs position perfect uh, so now we're basically done. Um, we have found both the, the positions and the intensity, the heights of our picks uh, that were uh, uh, present in, in our function. Um, we just have to, to plot them. But before plotting them, uh, I will also sh I would like to, to show you uh, another uh, thing really related with uh, with the peak with the find peaks function, mm, as I tell as I told you at the beginning, uh, we may be interested also in the minima of our function, um, not only in the uh, about the peaks, and in this with with regards to to this, the the function find peaks uh, is only able to, to to spot the peaks of a function so the maxima. Um, so we can trick the function and use it again also to identify the, the minima in a very easy way and I will show you how to do that. So basically now we're interested in finding the minima of the function. So the trick is uh, to mirror the, the function uh, and then to find again its peaks and then to mirror it again when 
plotting it. Because if you think about that, um, when you have a function and this function have has some minima, if we mirror the function with respect to the horizontal axis, the minima uh, would would then begin be, become the the maxima, so the peaks. So we can then identify them with uh, with the find peak function, and then once we identify their value and their position, we can just mirror again the function with respect to the horizontal axis and and just plot the 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 the, the minima. Um, so to, to mirror the function I'll just call I will just define another array called y2 and well it's very easy because we just have to multiply the y array by minus one. Uh, so in this way we got uh, a mirrored image, a mirrored plot of our uh, original one. And then the procedure is very similar to, to the one uh, that I've just described above. So I'll define an array called minima uh, and then I will just call the function find pics. Uh, this time the input will be y2 and I will not specify the height because I don't know what's the the minimal height of the of the minima since we are mirroring the, the function it can be possible that some uh, minima which are then converted into maxima could still have some negative values and so on so I, I'm not aware of the function and, uh, and more specifically I'm not aware of the value of the mirrored uh, minima. So I'll just leave it as it is. Um, in this way, um, well, we can just yeah, if we want, but we, we're since we're not using it, it's well. Let's just leave it as it is. Uh, I can now uh, infer the minima position um, by indexing the original x-ray which is equal for, for both the function with the the first and only this time subarray of minima and so here we have a list of the minima positions perfect and then uh, since we do not do not uh, have the, the the height of the minima directly from the call of this function, uh, the thing that we have to do is just to um, indexing uh, uh, indexing again the the y2 function with the main pose uh, list in order to get the values along the y array, the y2 array of the points corresponding to the to the minima. So I'll define min height and it will be equal to y2 indexed with minima 0 because the first one and this is the list of the minima heights well if we want it to be very precise it's not the they are not the minima but they are the mirrored minima heights because now we will have to, to mirror them again uh, when, when we will plot them. Um, so that's it basically. I think we are almost done. We just have to, to plot the function. So I'll just define some plotting functions like fig at figure or ax dot subplots Oop. perfect mm. what about now so we will just plot first the original function so plot as a continuous line the x and the y array which were the, the, the original function 
Okay, and then I will just plot the maxima and the minima as a scatter plot. So in order to have just the the points corresponding to these uh, specific uh, peaks or uh, trough or minima of the function. So I'll just go with scatter. And the first, uh, let's go with the maxima or the peaks, and uh, their position was stored in the peak, po peak pose uh, list, while their height was in the height list. Uh, I will give them a color. Let's go with red. Uh, let's give them also a proper size in order to be able to see them. And since we are going to plot also the minima, I'll just also I will just define a marker in order to be able to distinguish the two. D, which should correspond, if I'm not wrong, to diamonds. And then let's enter also a label in order to be able then to do to plot the legend. So this will be the peaks or the maxima of the function. Now I'll just copy paste this line, um, but this time I have to, I have to define them. I have to plot the minima. So the position of the minima were stored in the main pose, while their height is in the main height. Okay, let's give them another color uh, let's go with gold we should be sort of yellowish color uh, let's change the marker let's use a cross and of course let's change also the label the art minimum okay as I said let's plot the legend um, and then well let's go a little so with a grade which is always good. And I think we're done. We just have to plot the whole thing. Um, I think, yeah, this, sh this should be all. Let's try it. Um, oh yeah, sorry. Uh, as you can see, um, these are not the minima because basically I forgot to mirror re-mirror again the the mirrored function um, uh, with respect to the horizontal axis so these values are the um, the the minima uh, but mirrored with respect to the horizontal axis this is symmetrical to this um, this is symmetrical to this one and this one is symmetrical to this one. So what I have to do, what I had to do, sorry. I'm sorry for this thing. I quite forgot about that. Um, we just have to, to uh, multiply again by minus one, the height of the minimum or if it was, if you wanted to, to make a, a, a more, uh, let's say a clearer, a clearer thing, we could just um, identify uh, or define another array, uh, which, which will be called, let's say, actual or uh, real mean height. And um, let's do this, uh, real mean height, and it will be, equal to min a times minus one, which is more straightforward. And then here we just got real min a. Now it should be good. Let's see. Perfect. As you can see now, we have all the maxima uh, correctly determined and then also all the minima here. So that was it, maxima and minima. Mm, perfect. Uh, as you can see, uh, there are some, like for example, these or these or this one, or this one, 
uh, which were uh, maxima that were not identified by the function because uh, they probably uh, didn't respond to the conditions that I just entered here. So usually when you have uh, to find the peaks or the maximum or the minimum of a function, you just have to repeat the procedure <coughs> and to tune the values of these different uh, optional parameters in order to include or to exclude uh, unwanted or desired um, peaks of, of your function or, or signal. Um, so that was it. I think this is all uh, that I have to say about this function. Hope you enjoyed the, the video. And sorry again for, for the error in the, in the last uh, plotting procedure. Um, yeah, and that's it. Um, hope to, to see you again in another video. And yep, bye.